All right, you guys, what is going on? Uh, welcome to the video. So, uh, yeah, it's been a while, you guys, and I want to apologize for not uh, keeping you up to date on what's going on with the uh, web boot camp, the uh, full stack web developer boot camp. Um, obviously, you know, hold on one second. All right, obviously, you know that the world is kind of upside down right now with the uh, whole COVID 19 situation. And most of the schools around the uh, United States have been shut down, put on hold, um, gone online and different things. So uh, we were in the middle of, um, what were we doing? We were doing uh, jQuery and um, gosh, I can't what the last thing we were doing. But uh, yeah, we were in the middle of doing some different stuff. Um, finishing up some JavaScript and uh, next thing you know, our classes got put on hold. And so we had to start working from home. And so that's what we've been doing. Um, anyway, it's been kind of crazy. Uh, personally, I've had a lot going on. So again, I apologize for not making any videos, but we are excited to come back and uh, we want to go ahead and start off um, our video um, series, a little side series on the HTML5 98-375 uh, uh, HTML certification test, uh, certification test, that's right. And uh, so learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is awesome. And uh, there's a lot of great courses out there, uh, Angela's, uh, which we started off with, and we went on to this other brother named Max uh, Yurt, Yurtman or Yurt something, uh, I believe. And anyway, um, Great stuff, but the problem is, is that when you're going for a certification and you're going to have to take a test, multiple choice or whatever it may be, you want to know exactly what's going to be covered on the test, because you you guys know, within HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, there is an enormous amount of uh, tags and different commands you could do uh, within the code. So. We're not trying, I mean, yes, of course, as, as programmers, as coders, we want, as developers, we want to know all these things eventually, but we want to know specifically what we need to know for these certifications because you don't want to spend all your time studying the wrong thing. So anyway, we came across this CertiPort um, study course or study uh, guide, and so we wanted to show you guys. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so uh, the first thing they got is managing the application life cycle. And uh, it says the scenario is uh, Alphonse Parovsky Par Par works as a technical writer at A, Dict uh, Datum Corporation. His do job responsibilities include writing technical specifications for customers who have chosen A, uh, Data Corporation, for their web hosting needs. His supervisor recently assigned him the task of updating the specs to include the changes for HTML5 in, in addition to the considerations necessary for handling various device platforms such as smartphones, slates, tablets, and devices with touchscreen capabilities. So number one, what HTML5 features assist in handling various device sizes? A, cookies, B, media queries, or C, plugins? And the answer is B, media queries. Uh, this feature included Introduced with HTML5 and CSS3 allows the program to detect the device and resize the, dis the site display accordingly. Number two, Alphonse needs to verify the hosting specs for the HTML5 client. Which items are most related to the concern? A, reliability, scalability, technical support, security, and support for various operating systems. B, plugin support for such as Microsoft Silverlight and Flash. C, the developer application used by the client. And the answer is A, reliability, scalability, technical support, security, and support for various operating systems. Again, what did Alphonse need to verify the hosting specs for the HTML client? Uh, and so those are the specs you need. If the client, number three, if the client used Microsoft Expression Web to create the site, what command should he specify in his documentation to prepare the site for the hosting? A, site import. B, site publishing settings. C, site, site export web package. And the answer is C, site export web package. So if the client used Microsoft web, web Expression Web to create the site, the command that he should specify in the doc is site export web package. 
All right, and then uh, an essential detail that they give you is application packaging is the process of process of bundling an application and its resources into an archive form uh, format for the purpose of distribution and deployment. And permissions are grouped into per permission sets and every assembly is assigned a set. Uh, the .NET framework defines some standard permission sets such as full trust, which implies all permissions, and execution with permission to access the CPU only. Uh, each account each user account is assigned a level of access credentials. They can be uh, set to use Windows authentication, database authentication, no authentication, or custom authentication. All right. Let us move on. All right. So managing the state of an application. All right. So number one. Actually, let's, let's say the scenario. The scenario is... Yun Feng Peng owns a small business that sells and rents woodwind and percussion instruments to local schools. Mr. Peng has a presence on the web, but his, but his site is slightly outdated. His son just graduated with a degree in information science and technology, so he offered to help his father update the site. Mr. Peng talked to his son about one of his major concerns, the potential threat of using cookies to store sensitive data. His son explained the changes introduced in HTML5 that specifically targeted this concern. Number one, what change in HTML5 has changed how data is persistent across user sessions? A, use of improved cookies. B, use of local storage and session storage. C, media queries. The answer is B, use of local storage and session storage. The, ses the session storage method keeps data for the duration of the current session Local storage allows us users to save large amounts of data from session to session. Number two, what does it mean that HTTP is a stateless protocol? A, HTTP does not retain data from session to session. B, HTTP saves information from one session only. C, HTTP saves only form data. And the answer is A, HTT HTTP does not retain data from session to session. Because HTTP is a stateless protocol, it requires a method to retain data. Therefore, developers used cookies. Now, developers can use local storage and session storage. Number three, what allows HTML5 applications to work in an offline state? A, HTTP, B, app cache, or C, cookies? And the answer is B, app cache. App cache stores frequently used resources such as images, CSS, JS, and HTML pages, even when the user is offline. All right, let's continue on. All right, managing the application lifecycle 1.3, debug and test an HTML5 based touch enabled application. Wingtip Toys is a rapidly growing toy company with a great web presence. With the introduction of touchscreen technology, they have decided to provide their end users with some, touch, with some mini touchscreen games as an incentive to visit their site. The games are designed around holiday themes. For, an exa for example, in December, they posted several games with Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa themes. Mm -hmm. Each game that is developed must go through rigorous debugging and testing before it is posted to for play. One, if the, de if the developer does not have a touchscreen device, how can he or she debug the application prior to testing? A, use mouse touch event and an online touchscreen emulator. B, he or she cannot test until it is deployed to a touchscreen device. C, program it to respond to voice commands. The answer is A, use mouse touch events and an online touch screen emulator. Number two, what are some touch enabled best practices? What are some touch enabled best practices to test for? A, prevent zooming, prevent scrolling and render carefully. B, allow email and messaging. C, Use as many H new HTML5 features as possible. And the answer is A, prevent zooming, prevent scrolling, and render carefully. 
There are situations in which zooming and scrolling can be useful, such as when viewing a picture or an image. Number three, how can the developer validate the new HTML5 code? A, if the code compiles with no errors, it is validated. B, use an online simulator. C, use the W3C code validators. And the answer is C, use the, use the W3C code validators. W3C has up-to-date validators for HTML5. Remember, a validator is different from an emulator, which just renders the application and does not test the code for accuracy. All right. Essential detail, debugging is the action of detecting, locating, and correcting logical or sy syntactical errors in a program or malfunctions in hardware. DOM, Document Object Model, is a worldwide web consortium specification that describes the structure of dynamic HTML and XML documents. Hardware or software designed to make one type of computer or component act as if it were another, another is called an emulator. A computer screen designed, designed to recognize the location of a touch on its surface is called a touch screen. All right, moving on. Manage the application life cycle, 1.4. Publish an application to a store. Scenario, Begonia Hordado recently graduated from college with a degree in information science and technology and an, and an additional certifi certificate in web development. Begonia has a set of goal, has a set, Begonia has set a goal to pay off her college loans as soon as possible. She is creating applications that she can publish to an application store to earn extra revenue to help her achieve her goal. Number one, what steps does she need to take before publishing an application? A, plan a promotion strategy for her application. B, configure, build, and test a release version. C, review her use of local storage and session storage for her application. The answer is B, configure, build, and test a release version. Number two, on what platform or store can Begonia sell her Metro application? A, Android Market, B, Windows 7, C, Windows Phone SDK. And the answer is A, Android Market. The Windows Store is scheduled for release in February 2012. Uh, so that tells me that this test might be, or these test questions might be old if they're talking about schedule for release in 2012. Uh, number three, why should Begonia create a vector icon for her application? A, because people like pictures more than text. B, to demonstrate her graphic art capabilities. C, to promote, to promote the brand and help users discover the application. The answer is C, to, pr to promote the brand and help users discover the application. Essential details. An end user li license agreement, EULA, is a legal agreement between a software manufacturer and the publisher and the purchaser with regard to terms of distribution, resale, and restricted use. A launcher icon is a graphic that represents an application on the device's home screen and in the launcher window. All right, we're going to do one more and then take a break.